<laughs> Hello and welcome to the Night Girls. This is episode 565. I'm Laura, also known as Lala. I am Leslie, also known as You Don't Call Me Less. Today is the 4th of March. It is. It's my birthday month. It's my son's birthday day. <laughs> yep. I brought him cake. <laughs> yeah. Um, yep. Yeah, my son's 19 today. Um, I've seen him briefly. He has the day off and he's he last night wanted to bake cookies so that he could take them to work even though he didn't work today so that people would be prompted to give him presents and i'm like people aren't just going to have presents on them <laughs> and he's like money's a present and i'm like you know what i'm not getting involved in this so he went by work earlier and he's going to hang out with a friend tonight and did he get I don't know. I didn't, haven't seen now it Now I'm since curious as if this is a successful thing. Yeah, I don't know. But, um, yeah, so Laura and I both use the she, her pronouns. And um, neither of us feel like we really have much to show this week, but... It is fairly accurate. We did want to actually record. <laughs> um, plus, Laura has never had king cake. I have not, ever. I got a king cake on Wednesday... So that Laura could give it her turn. On Ash Wednesday. Yep. Um, oh, yeah, that's a thing, isn't it? Um, well, that's why King Cake exists. Because it's a Mardi Gras thing. Yeah, I was going to say, it's a Mardi Gras thing. I don't yeah. know anything about the religion behind it. I just know it's a Mardi Gras thing. Oh, we can go into that later. Nope. If you want. <laughs> um, but thank you. You're welcome. Uh, do you want to go first? Or sure, I can go first. I haven't unpacked anything, but there's not much to unpack. <laughs> so I started... Um, Last week, knitting on um, some new socks. These are Knit Spin Farms Targi Sport Weight Socks and Inspire Your Heart with Art on size one needles. I just completed the toe increases. Oh, so you've only gotten like 10 rows on that this week. Um, it was at two? the purple. Okay. So a little bit more than 10 rows, but yeah, not a lot. <laughs> not a ton of work. Um, but yeah, a little bit. Yeah. So not terrible. I had a meeting that I knit on them a little bit during, but they just live in my purse. And um, when I've gone to pick up groceries, they've been outside waiting on me. Yeah. Like I say, I'm coming. And so, um, but they're in Target. So I haven't had my sit and knit time in the parking lots. Um, so that is the first thing on my needles. And then the second thing on my needles is my sweater. So this is the Felix by Amy Christoffers. The body is done. The sleeve wow. is started. Would you like me to? It's fine. So it's the first washed out a lot on the screen. It's a really rich blue. Yeah, it's a turquoise. And I tried it on and it fits. So my modifications on Shinjin, the yoke increases were successful. So um, what I did was five stitches in from the marker on the rest rows, the non-lace rows, I did an increase after two repeats in. So you can kind of see them, but they're kind of disguised. So it works out pretty well. Um, so yeah, this is a woolen spun yarn, so it's pretty lofty. And I am hoping it, Tuesday it's supposed to get cold here again. It's like 80 today here. So um, Tuesday it's supposed to be cool again, high of 50. So maybe I can get it done to wear then. I was going to try for this Tuesday and then they changed the forecast to 80. And I was like, yep, I'm not putting forth that effort. Yeah, I tried to hold out on turning on my air conditioning, but I gave up yesterday and turned it on. So those are the two things that I'm working on. The hat did not get any work and the um, the shawl did not get any work on them either. So, yep, that's all I got, those two things. And I didn't finish anything. I forgot to bring your spinning. I almost did. It's fine. Um, Leslie spun at my house this week. I did. I finished the first bobbin, but I started on the second one. So, um, so I am knitting also on a pair of Knit Spin Farm socks. This is the National Mushroom Month colorway. These are for Kobe. Um, I do a top-down heel flap sock. I use 56 stitches. I had to think there for a minute, do some math. Um, 
and just a simple slip stitch heel, nothing fancy. And yeah, so I finished the first one. I'm not certain if I was finished last week or if I was still working on it, but finished the first one and I started on the second. I just finished turning the heel and now I'm working on the gusset. Look at you go. So, um, not a ton of work on this this week, but uh, I'm, I'm pleased with how far I've gotten, so good. Um, and then I swatched for something else. And that was, so in my cleaning of my craft room, I came across several things that I'd forgotten existed. One of them was from the Isolde Sweater Club. Yeah. Which was several years back, and I don't know how many shipments it was. 2019, maybe? Yeah. And the pattern that it was written for is called Inverleaf. Yeah, you had started that. Uh-huh. Started a couple times. Because, so, and the pattern is written by Isolde. And, um, but because of the shaping of the shoulders, the way that it was done, it had like several different increases, um, like increases that were different from the normal way that a raglan is done. Um, yeah, so raglans typically have two increase points on the front and the back mm -hmm. with the sleeves also incorporated. And if I'd been paying more attention, it probably would have been fine. I, I seriously doubt there was anything wrong with the pattern. Um, but yeah, so I gave up on it and then I started again and gave up on it and then it just sat on the needles for a couple of years probably. Um, mine is the colorway I got was, it's called Campion. It's pretty. And it's a very bright, it's, the yarn is called Sedum, S-E-D-U-M. I think it's exclusive to Zolda. It was, I think. She doesn't have an online okay. store anymore. So it's she just 656 pattern. yards of a wool, linen, silk blend. It's very shiny and very soft. And I've got five skeins of it, I think. And um, so I ripped it out and I actually left the swatch that I just did downstairs, but I had a swatch from before um, when I was swatching for a different pattern. So I am swatching for wind swept which is a tin can knits pattern. Yeah. Um, several years lace, old. Lace mm -hmm. panel. Yep. You knit the lace panel and then you pick up stitches along the edge. Oh, well, interesting. Um, but the sizing's great. I think it goes up to like a 5X um, in sizing. It starts at like a newborn. You know, they always are great with their sizing, tin can knits. Yep. Um, so, yeah, I, I swatched... I went off of the old numbers first and measured, and I wasn't getting the right number. So I went up one more needle size, and then it was too many, so I went back down to one of these sizes, and it was enough. So my gauge has relaxed slightly. Yeah. Like, that happens every time. A stitch and a half over four inches or something. It's not a lot, but yep. So um, windswept calls for either a sport or a DK. I think it's a DK. But I got Gage holding lace double. Oh, okay. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, I have plenty of yardage. And um, I tend to like pullovers, although Windswept does have the option to turn it into a cardigan. Because there's like a, that. There's a garter panel in between the two lace yeah. um, side panels. And they give you instructions on how, if you'd rather it to be a cardigan, you can do XYZ. Interesting. But I just wear pullovers more than I wear cardigans, so, yep, that's what I'm going to make, um, and so I'll catch it on sometime this weekend, probably, and then I have one finished thing. You do? But I'm not pleased with it, so I've been working on this sweater for a couple months at least, and I want to, like, preface it by saying it's definitely not the yarn's fault. The and, yarn is amazing because I got to try on this one. <laughs> and it's probably not the pattern's fault. To be fair, I really wasn't super strict about how I did my measurements. Um, so in all reality, this is a Leslie fault and not a pattern or yarn. I mean, it's definitely not the yarn's fault. I can't say for sure about the pattern. But it ended up being super broad on me. I have very broad shoulders and a large chest. 
So typically I have to knit things a little bit larger in order for it to be a comfortable loose fit, which is what I prefer. I don't, I don't tend to like things that are really, really tight. Um, this is still two sizes too big for me. Um, which is sad, but you know, that's the way it goes. And then even though I shortened the sleeves by six inches, they are still six inches too long. Um, and that's because of how wide this is and how far down the drop shoulder goes. And that causes it, like when I put it on, the sleeves are longer than my fingertips. So that's kind of a bummer because I had woven in the ends and everything. <laughs> um, so it makes me sad because I love this yarn, but this means I get to knit with it again. Yeah. So what I'll do, probably not for a couple of weeks because I need a little bit of a time out, but what I'll do is I'll pull the sweater out. If I, if I sincerely thought that this would fit anyone well, I would take it to SSK and then find someone who loved it. But I just gen genuinely think that it's so squat. Why don't you not tear it out until after SSK and you can put it in the try it on room just so people can see the pattern on themselves? Maybe. I don't know. I'm going to put it in time out for a little while anymore. Yeah. But. Um, and then you can always take it back and rip it out. Yeah. I I'm sad because I really wanted this to work. But, you know, that's the way it goes sometimes. Um. If I do end up pulling it out, then I'll re-skein the yarn and soak it so that it's not like crinkly um, and start on something else. Yeah. There's lots of great fingering weight sweaters for out there. For sure. I mean, that was a big problem was, was narrowing it down for me. Like that's, that takes the longest is picking a pattern. So, um, yep, that's, that's it. That's all I got. One disappointing sweater. Yeah. There's One. my episode title. Ah, ah, ah. <laughs> um, and I have a little bit of spinning, but like I said, it's a Laura's house. And yep. It's just on the bobbin, so it wouldn't really be super interesting. Yep. I mean, it is interesting. It's pr very pretty. Thank you. I love how fine you get your um, woolen spun. I am a chunky woolen spun spinner. I, I cannot a, lie. Like, when I spin worsted, I can't get mine anywhere near as thin as you get yours worsted. Yep. One spun is a little bit easier for me to get it thinner, but... Yeah. Um, I do have a smidge of spinning. So I um, started spinning some Rolags. This bobbin looks so messy because I forgot to change my hook. <laughs> so, this is um, a common thing yeah. for Laura. So I spun two of the Rolags that I made in a class with Twisted Urban. Um, and I have the other two that I'm going to spin on another bobbin and then I'm going to apply them. So the inspiration for this was a picture of a rose. Um, so it was yellow and pink roses and you can see the brown from the stem and some green from the leaves. So, um, it is very woolen. You can see all that fiber. And roll eggs are little like fiber tornadoes. They're woolen prep. And I spun this on a supported long draw. So it is on the um, match list, which was set up in double drive. So it's all the squishy, lofty goodness. So yeah, um, I'm going to try to start applying this weekend so that I have finished Leslie's sock yarn to give to her next week. And um, I have some other things to apply up as well. And then I just have a lot of things on the bobbins. I have you know, uh, a Morn Apply, which is a Knit Spin Farm Bat. I have the sock yarn from Wound Up Fiber Arts for in the Winter Storm colorway to apply for Leslie. That's a traditional three ply. I have some Targi from Bumblebee Acres. I don't even have the first bobbin of that done. I'm almost done with the first bobbin of Natural Cordale that I'm spinning on my Lendrum. And then I have these roll legs. So like almost every wheel in my house has something in progress mm -hmm. on it. So I really need to buckle down and the fleece just arrived yesterday. <laughs> so I'm so excited. It's got spots. I haven't even opened it yet because I'm going to do an unboxing. Mm -hmm. um, and so I'm super stoked about that. So there's just lots of fiber arts to do and not a lot of time. And we have a friend coming in a week and a half. Yes, it's super exciting. And uh, my room that the person is supposed to stay in is like a fiber explosion. So I will have to try to fit 
things back in the bins where they belong. <laughs> or buy more bins. But yeah, that's always the problem. Um, on the topic of spinning, I do have an article in the New Ply Magazine, which is Goats. It came out on the 1st of March for digital subscribers. Um, and at the print Physical. editions, yeah, will ship on the 10th. I showed my kids on my um, <laughs> MacBook. I cast it to the TV and I showed them the article. And one, my first class did like a little cheer for me. Aww. It was very cute. So I have an article about sock spinning with mohair um, and how to combine that with, well, to make long lasting socks. So it was a fun experiment. It's something that I did last summer. And then I wore wool and mohair socks in the summer for like a month. I know what you did last summer. Yep. Uh, that book is still so popular in my library. I just had to buy some new copies. That's a book? I thought yeah. it was the movie. Is that it is based, based on, on a oh. book that came out in like the 80s. I do, you always, when you say <laughs> that, you're always like, dumbass. Like that's, that's like <laughs> the <being implied>. bird. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, dude, I don't know every book ever made. If that book was in that library when you went there. I didn't mean crap. Uh, that book museum when you went there. But um, I work in the library that Leslie attended when she was in middle school. Yeah. So that's how I know all the books that are, were in her library when she went to school there because I inherited them and have been slowly weeding some of the um, not great ones over time, like the Michael Bolton picture book. <laughs> that's so funny because it just makes me think like, surely there wasn't a kid who filled out a form and was like, this is the book that I want. No, you know that woman did not have people <laughs> fill out forms for books that yeah, they wanted. Yeah, I don't remember that ever being an option, but... Yeah. When yeah. I took over that library, um, she was the type of librarian that read or had someone read every single book that came into the library, and if it had, like, what she considered a cuss word, like, fart, mm -hmm. she pulled it. Um, so I inherited, like, boxes and boxes of books that had been pulled and all had these little, like, handwritten notes, like, about why she had pulled them. Like, it says, but, on page 22. Oh. Can't have that nonsense. Oh, the 90s. Yeah. Um, let's see. What else? Um, I'm reading a completely brain candy book. Um, well, it's a series uh, called The Monstrous Series by Lily Main. It's sort of post-apocalyptic um, world with fantasy, like monsters in oh, it. Oh, interesting. It's male-male romance, um, definitely huh. not for kids. But it's kind of funny and, uh, you know, I didn't, I wanted something not serious right now. So yeah, this fits that bill. What about you? I'm still listening to The Thursday Murder Club by Richard Osman, which is an adult um, retirement home mystery series. So yeah, nothing exciting. I'm still watching um, Sister Boniface on BritBox, and that's about it. I haven't been doing a ton of, I don't know, I go home and I sleep some, yeah. some days. It's been one of those years. We were supposed to record yesterday, and mm. both Laura and I were like, "We can, I can't do it today. <laughs> like, we both had just terrible days, so. And it was all because of adults and not because of children for me. Yeah. So, it happens some days. Um, let's see. What else? I, I think that's it. We, we're working on a lot of SSK-related stuff. The lottery to enter SSK sorry, the lottery for attendance for SSK is... If you want to attend SSK, it's a lottery system. Mm -hmm. We pull random names. Um, we have a good bit of spots right now. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, um, we will... When does that close? The 11th okay. of March. So, I think it's the 11th of March. I'll go back and double check. Um, it is on the form, and that form is yeah. linked in the show notes. Um, well, the website is linked in the show notes, and the form's right there. So, um, yeah. We... There's um, a chat group on Discord, and our Discord for people who have SSK questions. Mm -hmm. 
you definitely ask those there. Um, or you can shoot Leslie or an I an email. Mm -hmm. Always. Um, we did find our fourth teacher, which is awesome. Yay! More I know. More information on that once we get a contract signed. Um, but yeah, that's basically all we've got this week. So it's a super short one. Yeah, there's a lot of people at Stitches West right now, and I'm hoping they're having a wonderful time. Good. And supporting those indies. Yep. Uh, two guys is there, oh, which cool. is great. Oh, and David. They're wonderful. They have a little, like, fiber, you can buy by the ounce fiber, like, box oh. where you can pick out, like, little minis. I thought was a super yeah, fun idea. Yeah, that's an accessible way for people to get bits and bobs. Yeah, for classes or yeah. whatever else that they need bits and bobs for. But yeah. All right. Well, you guys have an awesome weekend, and we will talk to you again next week. For sure. Bye, Bye y'all.